In this video, we're going to be talking about how to make $200 per song without streams. One of the things that I've done as an artist and that almost every other artist has done is when they've released their music on Spotify, they spend all this time doing marketing. They spend all this time getting people to listen to their songs. You've probably spent, I don't know, $10 or $100 or maybe $1,000 on your promotion. And then the question you have to ask yourself in order to continue growing as an artist business is how much did you actually make from spending that much on marketing your music? When we ask the question of how do we make $200 per song without streams, the reason that we say without streams and a lot of people are gonna miss this is that this isn't 150,000 streams in order to make $200 because that's how much it would take roughly for you to make that much money from Spotify. This isn't marketing your music. This isn't playlist pushing. This isn't going and talking with publishers and labels or people that can pump up your song on Spotify and then probably own most of the rights or at least you owe them money for the marketing that they've done. This is not a buy streams or purchase your promo or run Facebook ads on Instagram or on Facebook in order to get traction. And this isn't making a bunch of TikToks about your music. This is a totally different approach to how you can monetize your music more effectively in today's world. So guys, what is the method? Well, this is something that seems kind of like a fad in the past, but just like any industry that we've seen grow, it goes through cycles of a lot of hype and then it goes through cycles of a lot of disappointments, maybe some uh, hopelessness and then some aspiration. And this is, you know, any market cycle, whether it's real estate or it's stocks or it's the music industry. So diving extremely deep into how to distribute music myself, what it takes in order to get your music out there directly onto platforms even and own 100% of your music is something that's taken me down a rabbit hole and seen a lot about the music industry that is, I wanna say, very uh, familiar to that of a monopoly. And so you have to consider those things when you're trying to grow in an industry. Where can you have your monopoly? Where can you have your unique selling point? So what we're talking about here is getting your music out on the blockchain having about 150 editions of your song, each edition costing a dollar and 50 cents. Why would you do this? This is a way to monetize their music more efficiently because maybe they only had to show that song to a thousand people and get 150 buyers versus 150,000 people to only get $200 on Spotify. So, Think of this as real estate. Before we get into exactly how you're gonna do this as an artist, it's important to understand what the mindset is that you have to have. So the reason that people enter the real estate industry is because there is government incentive ingrained into the real estate industry, whether it's tax write-offs, whether it's incentives for you to hold on to a home or live into a home and that they give you better prices, whether it's getting really affordable loans because they want everybody to be able to afford a home, or if you're on you know, the actual business side of real estate, all of the different incentives that you get in order to develop real estate. And this is what has kept the American economy growing through the real estate market. It's because there's an incentive. Same thing with electric cars. One of the reasons that we're seeing such massive growth in Tesla, or even in a small company like Rivian or Lucid, is because there's a lot of government incentives and something that really helps a company is having government incentives because it means that that country that is supporting that cause is going to back it and then that's going to make it easier for the business to grow. And so whether it's the space industry that is growing at a faster rate than we've ever seen simply because there's a lot more government backing now than there ever has been. Right, so let's take Spotify as an example. If you have Spotify and artists that are offering their music on Spotify aren't getting any incentive. In fact, all the incentive 
is actually for the consumers that are listening to the music uh, that they have to then pay you know, $10 or $15 a month in order to have a premium subscription to listen to the music, right? There's not a whole lot of incentive for artists when they're getting paid less than a penny per stream. And in order for you to get, like I said, 150 streams, you're going to have to do a tremendous amount of work. So in our three keys to music NFTs group, we like to really practice getting the value for your music and specifying that value so that it is congruent with what you want your music to be worth, right? So rather than relying on Spotify, which is its own government, but doesn't give artists a lot of incentive. And I say its own government because they choose who they pay more to, who they pay less to. They choose who they want to distribute to their platform, who they don't want to distribute to their platform. They can determine who goes on the big playlists and who does not go on the big playlists. There's a lot of control there that isn't fully incentivized to the artist. And so when the artist wants to incentivize the consumer direct to the consumer, that's when we see music on chain. And this is what I'm talking about here. So like I said, one of the things that we go over in the three keys to music NFTs, how to plan, how to create, how to market your music as NFTs on the chain is that the incentive for people to buy your music as an NFT on chain and you have 150 editions at $1.50 is that they're going to get a piece of your career that could be an investment in you. That edition could be worth more and it is resellable in the future. That edition is also maybe access to a concert or access to an exclusive group that's only available for the select few fans who own that music on chain. So with these special editions that artists can offer, not only are you going direct to your fan, but you're also giving them more value and giving them a reason to hold on to your edition for the long term. We just seen this with Alan Walker a little while ago when he offered actually an 8% return on investment for anyone who purchased his song editions. So I believe there was around 10,000 song editions and they equaled about 20% of a total revenue share of one of his songs. Now at 8% and you could purchase one for a hundred bucks or $10,000, there was a few different levels. You could then see that when you buy that edition, he's going to periodically pay out in proportion to how much of the royalties or how much of that music you've purchased through the editions, pay out royalties to the fans who have purchased his music. And then those fans, just by purchasing and supporting his career earlier on, he was able to then pay them out, incentivize them to be a part, and they're going to reap passive income by holding on to that music. There's a reason that music is not just music and that it's a business and there's labels everywhere because music can generate income. How much income gets generated for independent artists is relative to how much they're able to turn their artist music into a business. And that's where Alan Walker did that. And that's what we're talking about right here. So once again, uh, this is a way to monetize your music more efficiently. And I use OpenSea or Sound XYZ, which are platforms and marketplaces that allow you to offer your music on chain. So the artist is going direct to the consumer. So you are an artist, you take your art, you wanna create that music, and you create your album cover, you create those incentives that I talked about that you get when you purchase the NFT. So it could be access to a concert, access to group chats, Maybe it's royalty payout that you pay out to the owners of your editions on a periodic basis. Or maybe it's just the ability to hold a collectible of your music, right? So at this point, you get your music out there on one of the platforms and you specify how many editions and how much each edition costs. Again, that's totally up to you. You can determine how much you deem your art to be worth. Then, of course, be relative, be affordable, or be luxury and be premium. It's totally up to you. Again, people really go back and forth with me on, is it really gonna be 
worth that much if I say that my art is worth a million dollars? Well, the thing about art is that you can say whatever you want, whether or not it will sell, it's going to be totally up to the marketplace. That's why it's important to do your market research and hopefully use some prior uh, experience in the industry or, or looking at your research in order to find a unique selling point, find where you're going to stand out from the crowd and then offer, you know, pricing that's going to still promote growth of your music as additions. So this is what you do, right? You have your music out on the platform. Now you have to sell it. When you're selling it, you can sell either for MasterCard payment, like debit card or credit card, or you can, uh, they can also purchase with crypto. So this is the process. And then you, cr you create marketing campaigns. You still offer your music on Spotify. Just every song that you have that's all out on those DSPs, those digital streaming platforms, is also that song is available in additions on the blockchain and that gives people the opportunity to invest in you and you can do some marketing to grow that song, right? So like we said, 150 editions at $1.50 would bring you over $200 for each song. And how you do the marketing? Well, there's a bunch of videos on my channel. Make sure to check them out. Don't forget to subscribe. And for those of you that are serious about growing your music and being able to turn your music into a business and offer your music as NFTs or just create more valuable music, then make sure to check out the free book down below. It goes into five music NFT tips to help you offer your music on the blockchain. And there's also a 27 page free book there as well. When you claim that book, that's going to give you a second book that's going to offer you the chance to learn about uh, AI. So there's 27 pages. I say offer. It's totally free. You can read through it and uh, you can see all of the things inside of that book that go over the latest technology and how you can utilize it as an artist. And then also for those of you that are serious, whether you want to work with me one on one or you're interested in just simply planning a project, creating it and then offering it on the marketplace, I do encourage you to check out the three keys to music NFTs down below. Simply our private group for if you want to surround yourself with other artist businesses, other artist entrepreneurs who are all offering their music on the blockchain. And it also has about uh, six hours of music NFT training videos, how to, like I said, plan your project, how to create your project, and then how to actually market and sell your project to your audience and to uh, the masses. So that's one of the greatest ways in 2023 that we're seeing as a projected uh, monetization method based on our current industry and how certain aspects have been monopolized and how there's difficult uh, ways to be able to simply get paid for your music. And so if you want to get paid for your music, you're serious about making more from your music, then I would encourage you simply check out that link down below three keys to music NFTs. So guys, thank you so much for watching. And if you got any value out of this video, make sure to like comment, and subscribe, and don't forget to leave any comments. If you have any future video suggestions, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.